Let's conclude the whole series for you, okay? Turn to Genesis chapter 3. <clears throat> That's the Pentecostal movement. I mean, it's, it's focused heavily on this speaking in tongues, baptism of the Holy Spirit. They take a phrase in the Bible and they just like, just run, run to the deep end with it big time, right? It makes no sense. They're claiming, they're claiming Catholics and Mormons and Protestants, all people who weren't even saved as, as evidence of this speaking in tongues. None of them are even saved. You know, you can't fall away, Pentecostal, because you're not saved. I'm sorry. All right? So, turn to Genesis chapter 3. So we just see, you know, I really started to feel unoriginal with this, with this whole series because we'd get to the end and we'd talk about salvation, and it always came to the same thing. It was just works, and it was another works-based religion, another works-based religion. You know, we could go on and on with it. I'm just trying to educate you on the kind of people that we're going to see, we're going to run into, the people that are local, you know, the ones that came from the United States especially. Um, you know, we could talk about the Reformation and the bastard children that came out of the Reformation for another 10 weeks, easily, right? Look at Genesis chapter 3. Here, here, let me wrap the Reformation up for you right here, all right? We'll wrap the Reformation up in 30 seconds. Genesis chapter 3, look at verse number 1. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field with the Lord, which the Lord God had made. This is the Reformation, okay? The Catholic Church started in 313 A.D., and the Catholic Church got just way too stupid. I mean, they were selling tickets to heaven. They were making up different hells. They're selling all kinds of stuff, you know, and, and I mean, it's crazy. They got way out of hand. Infant baptism, you got to come to us to get saved. You know, it wasn't just works-based salvation. They were trying to get money from people. I mean, it was the ultimate, you know, scheme, scam, basically. And it, got, it just got out of hand, and people were just like, you know what, this is ridiculous. And the devil's like, you know what, the devil needs to be subtle. So the Reformation was Satan's plan B. Because it's much more subtle than the Catholic Church. The Catholics, at least, they're just like, yeah, it works. The, the Protestants that you will run into are, are like, oh, no, it, it's grace. But it's really, to, to get grace, you've got to do works. They're, they're wrapped up. They're wrapped around the axle. And, and you'll meet these people. We've met these people. It's, it's hard to get some of them saved because they're so wrapped up. So the Reformation was just Satan's plan B. He's a subtle, he's a subtle being. And he's very subtle with what he wants. So, look, don't be confused, all right? At the end of the day, there's only two religions in the entire world. It's works-based religions, and it's salvation through believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. There's only two. There's not 500 all the different works-based religions, all the ones we talked about, the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Seventh-day Adventists, the Pentecostals, all these different people, they're all the same. It's all works. The Hindus, the Buddhists, the Muslims, it's all the same. It's all works. Every single one of them, it's all works. There's only one religion that's true, and it's through believing on Jesus Christ, and that is the religion of the Gospel, of the Bible. That's it. All the rest is works. That's why I said last week, you won't find a cult that teaches true salvation through belief alone. You won't find it. Because they have to have works. Now you say, why is that? Yeah, it's control. It's control. But why just works, 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 works? Why? Why don't they think of something better? Why don't these cults, these people that want people to join them, uh, why is it always works? It's unoriginal, right? You're sitting there, it's unoriginal. Why, why don't they think of something better? Why not have a faith-based cult, right? Here's why. Turn to Isaiah 14. This is the whole thing. This is where we stick a fork in it, right here. <clears throat> Turn to Isaiah 14. I'm going to wait for you to get there. Why is it always works every single time? Why? Isaiah 14, look at verse number 12. And the Bible says this, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, and I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be 
like the Most High. Works is the religion of Satan. Amen. Literally, it's the religion of Satan. It's his religion. That's why they all look the same. That's why when you cut through all the garbage, when you use the screen of the Bible, it's all just works because it's Lucifer's religion. Because I will get myself to heaven. I will be like the Most High. It's his religion. He invented it. He's not going to come up with something that says that you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. No, you believe on you, and then you're damned to hell with him. Lucifer is a selfish being. He's an arrogant being that thought he could be above God. And works is his philosophy. So that's how you know. When you cut through everything, that's how you know if something is of God or not. When you cut through the philosophy, and at the end of the day, they, oh, they say it's grace through faith, um, but can, can I, is there something I can do to lose that salvation? Oh, yeah. There's something you can do. No, that's, the, that's Satan's religion. See? And it's subtle. But not really when you know what the Bible says. Amen. Right? Amen.